Today, I am going to do a short review of one of my very favorite tabletop role-playing systems ever. Next. Greetings, everyone. This is the Techno Funk Boy. Um, thanks for tuning in with me today. I am going, uh, I, so every time, every time I do a stream of my Order a Podcasters game or, or, uh, if, if somebody finds us on podcast, one of the first questions that is always asked is, what in the world are we playing? Um, and uh, so I thought that uh, it, uh, it might be might be a good idea to do a quick review of one of my very very favorite role playing systems, which is Esoterrorist by Robin Laws. Um, this is part of the Gumshoe system, with its uh, its sister system being Fear itself. We'll get into that in in just a little bit, but it is specifically designed. Uh, as a investigative system. And so gumshoe itself can be taken kind of into any, any type of environment and, and it works quite well, uh, uh under multiple systems. Uh, the different particular systems like esoteric and fear itself are, is the setting, is the dressing that, that goes over everything. What we're playing in particular is esoterist. Um, so, if you happen upon this video without knowing, uh, without knowing order of podcasters, that is my, uh, that is an actual play, uh, uh, podcast that I am the game master of. We stream it on Twitch and release it, uh, as, as a podcast. And we, we just started our second season and it's a ton of fun. Um, what you would see if you if you watch this game is that it is very very role play heavy and very very dice light. So the first thing that you're going to want to understand about this the system is that if if you and your uh in in your group really really like rolling dice this is not the system for you. <laughs> All right. Uh there are dice in the system and you do roll them and, um, and it's very important what, what comes out of it. But there's much less than a traditional system. Uh, the reason that there's much less is because in this game, the investigation is the most important thing, not necessarily like a battle or a skill check. And the particular niche that this, that the system is trying to, to, to fill, the particular problem that it's trying to solve is, is when you are doing an investigate, you know, when you're, when you're doing like a murder mystery in D and D or something like that, and the players miss the role on the super important clue. I actually heard this. It, it was in an actual play podcast, a Call of Cthulhu podcast. And, um, and it reached a point where they just like the, the players missed the role and they knew they missed the role and they left. And the, the, the game master kept at, uh, uh, kept asking him, or it's Call of Cthulhu's keeper and the, uh, kept asking him, it's like, okay, well, what do you like? Okay. So now it's Wednesday. What are you going to do? And, the sheer frustration in the players where they knew they were supposed to do something, but there was no way for them to, uh, to fix, uh, to figure it out because they'd missed the clue. Now, part of that was the, was the keeper's fault. You know, that that's, that is something that, you know, it, if you're running a game, if, if, if everything is riding on that one dice roll, you get, you, well, you can't have it like that. You gotta, you gotta have a backup plan, but this system solves that problem because as far as the investigation goes, the game assumes that you're competent in what you're doing. And if you're looking for something that you're skilled in, you're going to be able to find it because you're trained and you know what to look for. And so as long as you're looking in the right area and you have the right skill, you're going to find what you're looking for. Then the game is actually about interpreting the clues and in reaching the next area and putting them all together. In other words, the mystery of it. Now, 
the first thing I reacted to when I heard when I heard like this was, um, what in the world, you know, like, uh, you know, like that that's taking away all, you know, like all of the player the player agency like you know uh how, how am i supposed to search for clues if I, and in the book laws makes a really good point that you know that if um it, rolling what is literally a random n- number generation is not a skill and and so like if that if that is the thing that like i'm freaking out about because now i've lost my character character agency or something like that that's not a skill that I have <laughs> is to get high on, on this random number generator. The skill that you actually want in this game is being able to put together the puzzle pieces is, you know, find, finding that, you know, finding that hair and in anal- uh, in analyzing that hair from the ground and figuring out where it's going next. It is the story of this that is important, not the, uh, not the the actual dice roll. Now, as I say, there are skills that require skill checks, and if you get into a gunfight, you're gonna have, you're gonna roll some dice. And there are other situations where you might uh, where where you're going to roll, and um, and the outcome is going to be I- important uh, for the game. But finding the clue is not one of them. Um, the reason I like that is because that really uh, that really puts it on the players to role play through the situation, uh, to, to figure out the solution to, uh, to, you know, kind of, uh, uh, hunt around until they find what they need. And then, um, and then, uh, uh, kind of take that with them and move forward, uh, with, with whatever ideas they have, whatever theories they might have. Uh, and it turns out to be, a lot of fun. It's, um, it is a very, 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 um, rules light game. Uh, it, you know, especially for, for the players, it's, it, it is one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm looking at this, looking at this building. Do I notice anything, you know, weird? And the game master's like, well, do you have architecture as a skill? I do. Oh, okay. Well, then you notice that this room is five feet too short. So, probably a hidden door there you know it's uh it 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 is it is very rules light if you are running your own like if you're if 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 you as a game master are running your own game um it's a little prep heavy i'm not gonna lie to you um now the now the adventure uh the, the sample adventure in the book is very good. Uh one of one of the uh th- there's a couple of other books that uh that might uh that um are also offered as supplements. This one is my favorite. <laughs> the Book of Unremitting Horror. This has some great great creepy monsters in it that make me happy and uh some really great adventure ideas and different types of clues and stuff that that will get you started between the two books there there are a lot of adventures that you can play kind of right out the, out of the box which is really great there are also separate published adventures um it is uh it it is as, as something that's rules light it's uh when i say it's prep heavy uh to to kind of map out an adventure of where the players might go and what they might see and all that uh, that is just kind of filling out the possible story, uh, but the rules themselves are going to be are, are going to be very lenient on you, which is really nice. Um, now, of the two that I mentioned before, uh, the two Gumshoe games that I've actually played, Esoteris and Fear itself, as I mentioned, these are sister games. The Esoteris, which is the one we we play uh, in in order of podcasters, is more about investigation uh, investigation paranormal investigation this is specifically a horror game and you play professionals who are looking into uh you know looking into some paranormal happenings and trying to stop it um uh, uh the uh the, the our our 
our podcast name, the playful name of the Order of Podcasters, comes from the organization from the book Ordo Veritatis, which is the Order of Truth. That's the organization that you belong to as you're doing these investigations uh, to to stop uh, bad things from happening. Fear itself can actually use uh, actually uses you know the 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 same monsters. Um, uh, un- Book of Unremitting Horror works for both. Uh, game systems, but fear itself is more survival horror, where you are very unlucky and you happened upon something horrible and you need to get out. Um, and so, uh, it, it, different flavors, but can be companion things. So, uh, what one thing, one thing fun that we did was, um, in uh, uh, we had uh, on Dice and Dreary, we played, we played a situation in fear itself. And so it was kind of survival. And then later we had our order of, uh, uh, the order of podcasters come to the same situation to try to stop it. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but, um, depending on kind of what your group is looking for, you can kind of, you can kind of go either way with this. Both are fantastic fun. Th- these are games that I really, really like and, um, uh, have a lot of fun, fun with, as I mentioned before, if you are very much into fighting and dice rolling and, um, uh, you know, bashing skeletons over the head with a long sword, this isn't, this isn't the game you're looking for. Uh, if you are looking for probably the, the best way that I've, that so far I've come across to have a good mystery, uh, uh, in, in a tabletop setting that, uh, where, where, you know, uh, your players are going to follow the clues to to the solution. This has been my favorite thing to play, and uh, I, I we have a ton of fun with it. So, um, again, uh, this is a uh, uh, esoterist uh, by Robin Laws, Fear Itself by Robin Laws. Um, both of these are Pelgrain Press, which uh, uh, kind of howls the gum shoe system as a whole, and and so there's a lot of stuff on their website, which I will link below, uh, that, uh, is going to, um, give you a lot, uh, uh, a lot to, to kind of, kind of pick through. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Really appreciate you tuning in. And if you have not subscribed, so, uh, at this point, please do subscribe on this channel. I do a a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop role-playing games, in particular Dragonlance. Um, and we're going to be actually back very soon, very soon with, uh, some more dragon Lance, uh, Lance videos. I wasn't quite finished. I wasn't quite finished with the next section of dragon Lance. We've been walking through the old modules, uh, step by step and kind of giving some DM tips going through the whole thing. Wasn't quite finished with the next one, it's, but I did want to get a video up and thought this was a good time to, uh, to answer some questions on esoterist stuff. So please, like, subscribe, bell icon, you know the drill. It means a lot to me. And until next time, see you then.